Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. I'm Bob Polinski, Master of Wine. On occasion, I'll do a video that features some old bottles of wine. That's exactly what's going to happen on today's video. We're going to go back 50 years to 1973. The wine that's going to be highlighted is a Gran Reserva Rioja. This is a bottle of wine that I've had for many years. It's been stored in that cooler unit sitting behind me. This wine should be sensational. You never know with older bottles of wine, so let's find out. The wine is a Cune Imperial Grand Reserva, one of the great iconic wines from Spain. While it's very unlikely that you'll find the exact wine that I'm tasting today, this will give you a good indicator in terms of how a top-notch Grand Reserva Rioja will age and how the wine will develop. Now, the term Grand Reserva is really a statement that applies to the way in which the wine was aged not necessarily to the quality of the wine. The quality levels are gonna vary greatly from producer to producer. In the description below, I'll provide a recap of the top producers to search out. In the current market, the 2015s and especially the 2016s are generally very high quality. In terms of the wine being tasted today, the current releases are around $100 in the US market. Of course, that price will vary broadly in other places around the world. Located in the town of Haro, Cune is based in the heart of the Rioja region. It's been owned by the same family for 100 plus years. This may be the oldest bottle of Rioja that I've ever had at 50 years old. Typically, I keep good track of where I acquired the wine and what I paid for it. Somehow, the story has been lost on this wine. All I know is I've had it for a good number of years, and when I've owned it, it's been stored with very good care. You'll notice there's no import sticker on this bottle. It must have fallen off at some point, but the packaging for this wine has largely remained unchanged for several decades. The fruit used for this particular wine is sourced from the Rioja Alta. Three different vineyards are used in that area. All the vineyards are old vine, low yield, bush pruned, dry farmed, uh, a good deal of manual labors involved as well all quality cues that you'll find in other places in the world as well. The grape varieties used here, Tempranillo forms the base of the wine, Graciano is used in a small percentage to provide some depth, weight, and color density. The other is Nasuelo. In other places in the world, this is often called Carignan. When the yields are kept low and the vine has significant age, this can do wonderful things for a wine. Primarily, it adds some spiciness and color, but it also helps to lift the acidity. In this particular case, this wine has been aged in oak for a minimum of two years, and it's aged a minimum of three years in bottle prior to being released. In terms of vintage, 1973 is a bit of a mixed bag in much of Europe. It was not a strong year in Bordeaux. It was not a vintage year for, for port in the Douro. Italy, it was not all that strong of a year either. But within Spain, specifically in Rioja, the vintage was actually quite good. In an average vintage, around 7% of the total production will be designated as Gran Reserva. In 73, that number jumped up to 10%. So that's really a testament that many of the producers felt the quality of that year was such that they could dedicate a significant portion of their production to Gran Reserva. With this old bottle of wine, or really with any old bottle of wine, there are four steps that I take prior to pulling the cork. One is let the bottle stand upright for at least a day, two days is better. What this will do is allow any sediment to work its way down into the base of the bottle. It has less chance of making its way into your wine glass. The next is take a look at the fill level. As wines age, oftentimes the fill level will actually decrease. You'll see with this bottle, it's about as wide as my index finger. If you look at where the wine tops out and where the cork comes down, uh, there's about so much, maybe about a half inch or slightly more. For a wine 50 years old, that's actually a fantastic sign. I've had many old bottles of wine where the level's been down in the mid shoulder. Oftentimes that's a sign that the wine hasn't been stored well or there's a problem with the cork. The other is the third point, check the condition of the cork. It should be firm. There should be no signs of leakage or seepage. Again, an indicator that perhaps the wine has not been stored in the best way or the cork has been compromised. And the last bit, which, which I do with all old red wines, is I take a, a pen light and you shine the light into the base of the bottle. It's a little bit tough to see on this video, 
but it gives me a good sight of what level of sediment is in this wine. There's very little. I'm not going to decant the wine because of the minimal sediment. It also gives me some indicator of the color of the wine. Now, I do expect there to be some oxidation because the wine is old, but I can see that there still is some red tint to the wine, which is a very healthy sign. So after the use of plenty of foul language and what felt like Greco-Roman wrestling, I was able to extract the cork in one piece. Oftentimes with old bottles of wine, the cork can be a bit soft and crumbly, as was the case. But this came out in one piece. I used the two-prong cork puller, sometimes called an osso. Very handy with old bottles of wine. Now since this wine goes back to the 1970s, uh, it was a time when, on occasion, the capsules contained a bit of lead. I want to make sure that all of that residue was wiped clean. I'll take a clean cloth, oftentimes uh, just moistened with a little bit of lemon juice. I want something a bit acidic. I give the top of the bottle a good wipe. In this case, it actually does look quite clean. Then I'll come over the top of it again with a second cloth, which is dry, just to make sure that all of that residue is gone. Now, the use of lead capsules has long been banned. If you buy any wines from the mid-80s or more current, it's not a concern. But with older bottles of wine, uh, you really should keep in mind that you want to make certain that that lip of the bottle is very clean. In terms of the color, there's a good deal of fade with this wine. Remember, this wine has spent a lot of time in barrel and in bottle. There's an oxidative process that plays out. Also, it's tempranillo based, which inherently is not all that deep. But if you look down at the core, it still does retain a bit of red. In terms of the aromatic, uh, very interesting. It's primarily secondary and tertiary characteristics. And that secondary has been introduced by the use of wood. A little bit of that vanilla, smoky, charred characteristic to it. There's a bit of underlying red fruit as well. But it's primarily tertiary notes. It smells a bit like cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, uh, balsamic. Reminds me a little bit of dried orange rind as well. And for something really wacky and far out, it reminds me a little bit of the way some old churches smell. I don't know if that's frankincense or myrrh. It's been a while since I've been to church. Maybe I need to revisit that. But it certainly does have some of that characteristic as well. On the palate, this is an extension of what I picked up in the aromatics. Very soft, round character. I thought maybe there would be a hint of volatile acidity based on the age, the color of this wine. I'm not getting that. Uh, it's actually holding together very well. It has a lot of that, that spice characteristic to it. Uh, very soft, round, good length. I see the alcohol on the wine is 13%. Many of the more current vintages are going to have uh, a bit higher alcohol than that. This has none of that alcoholic heat. This is interesting wine. It's a little bit like, like drinking a time capsule. I think back to 1973 and I probably had big bells on and, and puka shells or whatever was going on back in that day. But a uh, fun bottle of wine. And look, having old bottles of wine sometimes can be a lot of fun. Sometimes there are huge disappointments. If you store the wines right and you choose the wines right from the very beginning, you're going to increase your chance of having a lot of fun with it as a later date. Grand Reserva Rioja is one of the best options you can look for in terms of value, quality, consistency, solid track record. As always, I thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. It's much appreciated. If you have some experience with old bottles of Rioja Grand Reserva, please post it down in the comments section below. I try to follow up on each and every one of those. And until next time, I'll see you somewhere out in the wine world. Cheers.